Exciting news, we finally went a game without having a goal chopped off for offside. Progress. Hi there folks and welcome back to Global Domination. I'm Nick from Sonic FM and this is episode number 36. Two games for you today. First up we are away to LC Sailors in the league and then we are at home to Bindong in the Confederations Cup. Since yesterday, we managed to turn things around a little bit and steady the ship. So we left off yesterday with the game against Bales here where we drew three each, and it was a very strange game. Since then, we then went to Magway where we won 5-1. Now, in the first half of that game, we didn't manage to register a shot on target at all. Turned around in the second half to the 5-1 win. And remember that's the team that would be 8-0 away from home in the reverse fixture. However, we got the win there. We then went uh, had Tanjong Pagar at home in the league. We won that one 6 2. Away to ABDB in the Confederations Cup and we won 4 0. And then away to DPMM in the league and we managed to win that one 2 0 as well. Goals from Michael Foy and Toa Kiang with a penalty there. Mm. So that was Michael Foy's second goal in as many games. So he's starting, he'd went a few games without scoring. So hopefully that's him starting to get them back. Um, only other thing really that happened is Jean Pierre Mendeki. In what game was it? The game against Tanjong Pagar. As you can see, after half an hour, we were 4-0 up. He'd scored a hat-trick. So, early on in the second half, I think it was about 50-55 minutes, I brought him off. His fitness was okay, but he'd scored a hat-trick. He he'd been playing really well. I wanted to bring him off and rest him because I knew that there was, you know, not a lot. We had a game against ABDB coming up and then DPMM after that, and it was quite a short turnaround between games. I just wanted to give him the break. He came to me after the game saying he wasn't happy that I'd been substituted when he was playing well. I explained to him that it was just because we've got games coming up. He wasn't happy with that and then decided that he's not sure if he can trust me anymore. Which then led me laughing at something more than I probably should have. In the game against ABDB at halftime, he gave the team talk saying how well everybody was playing. And he was inspired and motivated. So, as I said, made me laugh a bit more than I should, that although he doesn't trust me, I still inspire him. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I know that there's only so much you can do with game logic, but really. Anyway, since he's in inspired by me is still leading the line for us as you can see here with the team for the first game against the LC Sailors. We have Sawada in goals, Toa Kiang, Achanyuk Fee, Hamza and Darante at the defence, Rosley and Saran in midfield, and Jongkit, Arwan and Foai are the attack in midfield and Mendeki is up front. So we'll get into the game. And see how things go today. Hopefully, we can keep this little run going that we've got. Game underway now, and it is Keranovic with the goal kick for LC Sailors. Keep with a great ball forward though for Fawai, and Fawai gets in there for his 11th goal of the season. I did say I hope that that's him starting to come back into goal scoring form, and it looks like it might just be. Yang with the header from the goal kick down to Keat. Keat with a big diagonal ball for Fly to run onto. And he hammers it home beyond the goalkeeper and 1 0 two minutes into the game. So that's a good start for us. And 15 minutes in, nothing much else has happened, although we do have a highlight now, and it's a free kick for LC Sailors. Asman with the free kick in and. That guy with the header, Jakubaliev, I think that's pronounced. Although I'm 
probably mispronouncing every single one of my players' names, so I don't know what makes me think I'm going to get his right. Sorry, I keep getting notifications on my phone and my phone buzzes as I'm checking just in case it's anything important. Uh, Kawhi with a header, but he's fouled as he goes for the header. So we've got a penalty. It's Kiang with the penalty. Run up and slots that one home. 2-1 now to Galings FC. And 22 minutes gone, we're back in control. Simple penalty, sends the keeper the wrong way. That's a couple of penalties he scored for us now. Corner now for LC Sailors. As the Asman sends that one in, but it's headed clear. Edwards now gets onto it, plays it to Ibrahim. And Saran cuts out the pass from Ibrahim. Kawhi on it now, plays the ball forward from Mendeki. Mendeki's through, one on one with the keeper, and he slots that one home for his 19th goal of the season. And that is now 3-1, gives us a bit of a gap and makes things just that a little bit more comfortable for us now. Mendeki plays the ball out wide to fly. Why just waits and waits. Mendeki running the line well. It's through on goal, one on one with the keeper. And as we know, one on one with the keeper, it doesn't miss many of those. I'm keeping an eye on the Tampines goals. Uh, the Tampines score, because they are the team that are above us in the league. We want to try and close them down. They are drawing nothing each at the moment. Hamza plays a ball forward for Mendeki. Mendeki's through, and he gets his second of the game, the 20th goal of the season for Jean-Pierre Mendeki. He has been another excellent signing. Both him and Foy have been brilliant. And don't get me wrong, uh, Hamza and Rossley have been pretty solid as well. But Mendeki and Foy have just been standouts in the team. The point where Mendeki is basically starting every game and Keat, if he's playing, is playing on the left wing. And look at that. Times he's run to perfection. Maybe just slightly offside. But it's given the benefit of the doubt there. And that'll take us into half time 4 1 up. So very pleased with the performance. Keep it going. Look, again, he's inspired and motivated by me. Doesn't trust me, but he's inspired by me. And he's motivated by the things I say. That's what I like to see in a player. And Elsie's Sailors coming forward now. Mohammed with a shot, but Sawada gets down well to save it, although it looks as if he was offside anyway. And a goal kick now from Keranovic for LC Sailors. Kiang wins the header from that one, plays it down to Keat. Keat with a big ball from Mendeki, and Mendeki hits the post, going for his hat trick. Thought that was just going to sneak in, but it's away for a throw in. Kiang to Keat. Keat heads it back out to Kiang, tries to get the cross in, but is well blocked by Zulkifi. He loses out now to Rossley. Rossley gives it to Kiang, and he feeds Keat through on the left hand side, squares the ball across the box. Foy was there, really should have been a goal. That's Foy with the header, but Edwards picks up the ball. Plays it back to Ibrahim. And it's LC Sailors coming forward with it now. So Keithley is played through. He's through one on one with the keeper, and he manages to tuck that home for his fifth goal of the season. And that pulls one back now to 4 2. So it's still a pretty comfortable lead for us. But I think that's Hamza who just gets done there by the turn from Zulkifli. Does well to get the turn Hamza and finish. Half an hour left. I think we'll now look at some substitutions. Just checking scores and Tampines are still going with deals here. But let's make some changes now. Now let's have a look at Fitness and performance, so Erwan is not playing great, so he's not playing badly, but he's not playing great, so we're going to bring Ghazali on for him, and Te is having a terrible game, so we'll bring Khaled on for him, and that'll do it for now, and we'll just keep an eye on how things are going.
This is a thing that I'm not a big fan of in this version of Football Manager is when it tells you they're one yellow card away from a suspension and should consider subbing them off. If you sub them off, there's going to be in the next game they're going to be one yellow card away from suspension. Mendeki's through here and a lovely little chip for his 21st goal of the season. It's third of the game, hat, another hat trick for Mendeki. 5-2 now. And I think that's going to be game over. Why there? Plays the ball through. Mendeki gets past his man. Keeper comes out and goes down early. Mendeki with a little chip. Lovely. But yeah, back to my rant. It doesn't matter if he subbed them off because they're still going to be one yellow card away from suspension. So in the next game, they're going to be one yellow card away from suspension. The only way they're going to stop being one yellow card away from suspension is if they get a yellow card and get suspended. Just there's one of the, there's a, a few little things that I would like to see changed in the next iteration of the game. As we see, Ghazali goes through there and gets his third goal this season in our sixth of the game. Again, talking over this goal, so we'll have a look at it in the highlights. Khalid picks up the cleared ball inside to Saran, first time to Ghazali. Ghazali and Fawai exchange passes, and Ghazali slots at home. Lovely, as that takes us to the end of the game. But yeah, there's a few little things that um, I would like to see changed in the next iteration of the game. I'm just, I'm, I'm, before I continue, I'm just going to continue with suggestions to, for improvements. Um, don't get me wrong, the game is a massive upgrade from FM20 in terms of the match engine and things like that. One of the most annoying things about FM20 was one-on-ones where you would never score them. Player, don't know how many times a game, would be the best striker in the game would be through one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and wouldn't score. So things like that with the match engine have been improved and it's a massive improvement and it's great and I really like it. There are certain things, however, and there are more little quality of life things that I would like to see changed. Things like that suggestion makes absolutely no sense with the on a yellow card. It would make sense if the player was booked in the game and it was telling you they're on a yellow card, they're in danger of losing discipline, maybe think about taking them off. So how many times do we see that in real life games where players are on a yellow card and they've had a couple of on the edge tackles, so the manager will bring them off to make sure they don't get sent off. And that makes sense. But that one, I just, I don't understand. And I'm not going to praise his performance at the moment because he's still not happy. And we're five matches in a row without losing. And if we go and have a look, Ampenes lost their game against Bilstier, I believe. Quickly check uh, schedule. Yep, they lost one 0 Excellent. So as we can see, we are now top of the league on goal difference, level on points with Tampines. Although they do have a game in hand over us, I'm not too worried about that because we do have to play them another twice in the league. So as long as we can win those games, we should be doing okay. Looking at the player stats for the league as well. Um, and Deke's the top goal scorer, top average rating. Uh, Foy and Arwan are the top two in assists. And Deke's tied for the top player of the match. Nowhere near it in clean sheets because we've not been great at the back when it comes to clean sheets. And we're nowhere on the yellow cards, which is a good thing. So we're doing quite well as it stands, just coming up to halfway through the season. And Speaking of the season, we will be back in just a second with the team for the final group game against Bin Dong in the Confederations Cup. And back now with the team for the match against Bin Dong in the Confederations Cup. We have Sawada in goals. Zil Kifli, Kiang, Khaled and Tay are the defence. Mamat and Saran in midfield. And John Keat, Erwan and Foy as the attacking midfield and Mendeki up front. Some of the players are starting to develop a good understanding. So there are a couple of changes that you've seen there. 
Uh, Ramley is suspended, which is why Mamat has come in to the midfield. Uh, and Rossley's on the bench. He started the last game, so just giving him a bit of a break. Uh, same with Hamza. Giving him a bit of a break, so Khaled is coming in and Fee, to be fair. So it's just giving these players a bit of a rest, and because they are playing in the centre of defence, Rokifli is coming in to play on the left. So we'll get into the game now. I was talking at the end of the last game there about uh, quality of life changes and things I would like to see. There was another one that I had been thinking about, and I just remembered it. And that is, when you're trying to sign a player or offer a new contract to a player, and they tell you, they say that they're not interested because they don't think the team's ambition matches their own, or, you know, those kind of things. Would like an option to talk to them to try and convince them. Uh, both teams come in this one good form. How do you rate your chance to kick off? Enjoy the match for you. Blah, 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 blah. Yep, it'll be really important. Uh, so, yeah, the option to then have a chat to them or their agent or whoever and try and convince them that they should sign for you because again in real life that's something that would happen you would talk you as the manager or your scouts or your head of recruitment or director of football whoever it would maybe would talk to the player and the representatives and try to convince them that at the moment we may not seem or one with a free kick here and good save from the goalkeeper off for a corner. You know, you'd be able to say to them that it may not seem at the moment like we are good enough to meet your expectations. However, these are the things that we have planned to put into place, or these are the, th you know, these are our goals, and we would like you to help us achieve them. Okay, so ran over about features I want added in FM22. We are only in April, the game usually isn't out until round about November. So plenty of time to see what they've got they're gonna do. Uh as we go forward here. I forgot to say we've already qualified for the next round. Um so this is a bit of a dead rubber game for us. Which is why I've not been paying too much attention to it. But Fly trying to find Keat with a big switch ball there, but it's cleared away. And so Keithley picks it up on the left. Plays a long ball forward and headed clear again, but only as far as the Keefley is running on on the left. Plays it inside to Mama. Mama puts the ball into the box. Nobody there to meet it though. Or Juan picks it up on the right. Plays it back to Tay. Tay crosses the ball in. And Mendeke gets up with the header. And after two games where we had no goals disallowed for offside, we get a goal disallowed for offside. Very close though. Very, very tight. And we're coming up to half time now. Nothing much really has happened in the first half. Ben Dong have been completely stifled. They've not had a shot on goal yet. Never mind one on target. We have just not managed to finish any of the five that we've had. So into the dressing room. We have been a better team. Just keep doing what we're doing. And we'll see how the second half goes. Corner now from Irwan. He sends it in, but it's headed clear. By Ben Dong and... They tried to build something from the back now. Got it on the right hand side, but it's well won back by Mamat. Plays it forward to Keat. Keat slides Erwan in ahead of him. Erwan squares it into Mendeki, who's there for probably the simplest goal he's ever going to score. The keeper, rooted to the spot like a statue, didn't even move as Mendeki just tapped the ball in for his 22nd goal of the season. See there, Keat spots a run of Erwan ahead of him. He takes it to the byline, squares it. Keeper could probably have done much better there. Actually, no problem about it. Keeper could have done much better there. But I'm not going to complain. Because it's us that scored and we're winning. Uh, Tay wins the ball on the left-hand side. He has it now inside to Mama. Mama tries to find Mendeki, but it's Fly who gets onto the end of the ball. But there was a free kick given for a foul by Mendeki. And we've got half an hour left to play. I think it's going to be substitution o'clock. Keat is not playing well. Keat can come off because he is not playing well. And Rossley can come on for him. 
why he's not having the greatest of games either. So what we'll do is we'll swap him and Erwan around and he can come off for Ghazali. Who I think I'm going to need to stop playing for the under-18s because there's a few games he's come in, he's been really tired um, coming off the bench and it's because I've got him playing for the under-18s as well so I think I might have to change that. Went coming up to 20 minutes play and nothing really happening. It's been a bit of a dull game, but as I said, it is a dead rubber game. There's nothing for either of us to play for. We're both have qualified, uh, Ben Dong are comfortably in second, they can't qualify, so it's pretty much just kind of seeing out the group. Uh, Mendeki's played through here though by Saran, can't quite get a shot away. And gives it back to Saran. Saran has Zul Keefley ahead of him, but he play, chooses to play it inside. And Bindong have won the ball back and they're pressing forward now with an attack. Managed to get some players back into shape, and Saran picks up a loose pass there in the midfield. And that will be the end of the game. Undefeated in the group stages. So that's six wins from six. Good win. Again, game didn't really mean anything. It was quite a boring game. If I'm perfectly honest. Uh team looks well on course to realise the long term objective set out some time ago now, so you must be confident seeing the job through. Yeah. Okay. And that takes us to the end of the episode. I know I spent a lot of that having little rants about quality of life features in the game and things like that but it's my video I can do that for one unless of course you tell me otherwise by not disliking the video but please don't do that right enough waffle let's see where we're going to be coming in next actually what I want to do is I want to see when the Next round of the cup is drawn. Starts on the 26th of May. Doesn't tell me a draw date. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue on ahead until I get to the draw and we'll see who we're playing next so that Well, actually, I don't know because it says the 26th of May to the 16th of June. So is the 26th of May when it's drawn? Let's check the calendar. Uh, schedule calendar. The semi-final is on the 26th. So the draw should be somewhere in here. Events. Nothing. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue on a couple of days and see if we get the draw for the cup. If we don't get the draw before the start of the next game, we'll come back and we'll just decide roughly where we're going to come back. Okay, so we didn't have to wait too long. There was not an actual draw, the names out of a hat type draw. Um, but I have got the notification here that we're going to be playing Sembalan in the Confederations Cup semi-final. You'll remember Sembalan from last season when we were with Selangor. So we know all about them. And we will be playing that game on the 26th of May. Oh, well, the first leg is on the 26th of May. Begin to schedule now. You see, the first leg is on the 26th of May. So what I think we're going to, com going to do is come back for the... Return game against Young Lions. We played them in yesterday's episode. We'll come back for the return leg. The return leg. The return game of that. Uh, see if we can avenge that draw. And the semi final second leg against Semblin as well. That gets a few more games in the league out of the way. But that'll be tomorrow's episode. And that is the end of episode 36. Now, don't forget, if you enjoyed the video, 
make sure you hit the thumbs up button down below and if you haven't already subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any videos going forward I upload daily at 8pm UK time and as always thank you very much for watching